it's Karen from Liongate Farm and this week we are going to felt the unicorn of the sea, the narwhal. He's kind of new to me. I actually thought he wasn't real and then I googled him. He's real. So I'm going to teach you how to felt this. It's kind of fun. Hey felters, today we are going to make this unicorn of the sea narwhal. And let me show you what you need. He's pretty fun. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge for me. So might be a little harder, mostly because of his square head. Um, they're kind of crazy looking. So let me show you what you need. I'm going to say you need core wool. I'm going to show you a different kind of, it's my regular core wool, but it's a piece of batting. And then whatever, we're going to make a purple one. We're going to make a purple narwhal with some of my hand dyed. And then I'm going to blend some of this and this. I'm going to show you how to do that with just a basic dog brush or cat brush. But if you have hand cards, you can do it that way too. Um, just a little teeny bit of white and a little teeny bit of black. And then a little piece of fancy cording. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. It could be solid. I got this little gold and white stripe stuff. You might need some scissors. Um, you might need a ruler. You definitely need, whoops, you definitely need a, a skewer. Um, I'm using the 38 star spiral needles. I'm using the multi-needle. And then two pieces of wire. This first wire is 20 inches long, 16 gauge. And the second wire is eight inch long. And this is 18 gauge. This is his, the horn. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do, I want you to bend your wire up. Do not find center, leave it like this, curved at the end. So we're going to make like, at about, I know you guys like me to do this, whoops. Let's do it so you can read it. So about two inches, you want about two inches of tail. So that's going to be his tail. And see, if you look, hey, it kind of already looks like a whale. Um, and then you're going to gently bend this just into that shape. And you're thinking, this is pretty easy so far. Well, this is where it gets a little tough. So I want you to, let me put that aside, take a piece of core wool and kind of draft it out a little. I do not want you to do this tight. That's like, goes against everything I have ever said, right? Because if you do, you're gonna lose your little shape here. So get in here and just felt it a little bit. Inside, and then we're gonna flip him. Let's felt some more. Hey, this is only the th the third narwhal I've made. Somebody requested a narwhal, so we're making a narwhal. If you have something you want to learn how to make, I will learn how to make it and demo it for you. So you just let us know what you want to make or what you want to see us do. So try and maintain that width. So I'm just going to go a little bit further. So the first thing we're doing is just covering the wire. Not super tight yet. Let's just get this all stabbed in. So just keep stabbing this till it's pretty firm because this is your base. And this takes a minute. It's going to take you a bit to get there. Be mindful of the wires in there with your needles. Keep flipping it. I'm gonna go to my single. If it squishes a little bit, those wires, don't worry about it. You can just build it up with wool. I just like to have my base kind of looking like a whale. 
Right now it doesn't look like anything. project is a little bit more involved because it takes a lot of poking. So here's where you're at. So if you want, you can kind of bend him in the shape he's going to be in. So you can kind of already see that's what we're going to go for. Tail's going to go that way. So the next thing we're going to do is, you got that ruler? So I promised I'd show you this. So this is core wool in batting form. And to use this, you just tear it off in strips. It's harder to tear this way, so find its natural side. No different. I think this is how they make roving. It starts as a bat and they send it through. So my roving sometimes comes like that. So now what we're gonna do is take our ruler and we're gonna make a hot dog. This you can wrap tight. We're making shapes. We're going to build out the side of the narwhal. I like to secure it just a little bit before I slide it off. And there we go. We have a nice little shape. We're going to add this to our whale. Again, don't worry about it being majorly felt it on you know how I am about this because we're going to wrap him I do want to attach it though and remember he's going to get skinny back here by his tail so you don't want to go all the way back For this side. You know, my core wool, I just have to do this and it felt pretty much. It's pretty cool. If I just rub it together, sometimes it'll stick. off stretch it out a little bit that part's gonna go up here you should work on your felting pad remember um, why I don't can't put my head down very often If you're holding it in your hand like I am, just make sure you don't go through to your other hand. I am going all the way through the shape into the body. All right, so now you can see he got a little fatter. So we're gonna take a thin strip of core wool. I am going to draft this out. Remember, drafting just means pulling your wool apart. 
because wool always follows its friends. And I'm going to start at the tail. This I'm going to, well, maybe I'm not going to pull it tight. I'll just do one piece at a time. I might have drafted that out a little far. You can see he's shrinking when I, how tight I'm pulling this. And by, you can hear it with my needles, how tight I pulled that. Get another piece. You know, he still doesn't look like much. Sometimes I wish it would just magically come together, but sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to start working here. So the shape you want here is kind of a odd rectangle there. I'm going to give you some measurements. So his head ends up about two inches deep and about an inch and a half wide. So I've got the two inches and I'm a little bit fat because it's still squishy. So I'm gonna sit here and poke this. And as I poke it, I'm gonna start shaping it. Cause this is flat on the front. Be mindful of where your wire is you want it close to the front because we're going to put it the, the so my wire is there my wire goes here so this takes a minute I'm going to keep felting it around
can see it's already getting skinnier. You gotta learn to push the wool into the shape you want with the angles of your needles. It doesn't mean bend, bend your needle when you go in. You're going straight in and straight out. It's more moving your project around and moving your needle around. So you can see we're starting to get there. Now I'm, I've got my tail, you know this. So I wanna know where's his mouth gonna be? So start thinking about that. Start forming the head. So we have a lot of poking to do here to get him nice and smooth. You can see when I hit the wire, the needle doesn't go all the way in. So I keep looking at him from the front because I know I need, this needs to be square. I'm trying to felt that flat. I felt his mouth back. Keep working his mouth in there. There's a piece of somebody's farm in there. need to I just do so I'm pushing the wool back from his head right now into his body by angling my needle to the left but I'm still going straight in straight out See what's happening here. See, we're getting there. This is going to have to go a little bit more. Don't worry if you get a line or something because it will go away when we add the color. So again, I'm, I'm looking at the end here because it needs to be flat. And see, he's not real firm yet. I wanna make his mouth thinner. So I'm just gonna keep working my way back, felting him nice and firm. I want him smooth along his back and a nice fat belly. So we'll just keep going. And it's probably gonna take me 45 minutes at least. Um, 
of good poking to get him to the exact shape and nice and compacted the way I like him. Okay, so I've been working on this for about 45 minutes. And you know, remember, felting isn't a race. So just take your time until you get him the way you want him. See, this is still pretty soft down here, but I'm not going to worry about that. So now you have his tail. You got really close back here. around. So let's see how it gets smaller. And you're going to take these wires and just bend them a little bit. You know, like a tail, like a fish tail. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make his horn. So the narwhal horn is very interesting. It's actually a tooth that grows up and out throughout their brain. I'm like, like I said, I had no idea that narwhals were real. So I've been reading. So I put my skewer through his head. There's his mouth about halfway. I'm going to go to there. This is just a little trick if you need to add a wire and follow that skewer through. Actually, that's too, well, that might work. That's too far. Where's my wire? Fill your wire. My wire's right there. You'll see what's going to happen. We're going to go back where we were. Stick that through. Follow your wire. Follow your skewer. Now, find center. Squeeze his head. Squeeze that wire in there because it should be hooked on the other wire and we're going to twist it. If you put your finger on one wire and the other wire and twist, you're going to get even twist. Just go right to that end. All right, so now this is going to be our narwhal's horn. And we're going to felt that next. You're learning what? His head is all collapsed. Don't worry about that. So now I'm going to take just my regular body color. This is some hand dyed fiber that I dyed. So it's a little variegated. You might even have pink in it. It's a little variegated. And I'm going to attach it right there. Very. Now we want to go thin. Okay, so this. Their horns are very skinny. I'm going very thin. Oh, I came undone right here. Get back in there. So, remember when you're wrapping a wire, keep your roving flat. And I'm doing it very thin because I'm going to come back. And I don't want, I don't want it to be super fat. I want it to be skinny. I'm going to tear some of this off. If you need to put your finger there and let it go so it untwists, do that. So go to the very end of your wire. And then I want you to bend the tip over. So now your wire is not going to poke out. Let that unra unravel. See, this is going to be too much. So let's draft it out a little bit. Your wire is going to bend while you're working on it. Oh, I can see my wire. Okay, going back. You can work your fiber up and down this wire with your fingers to make it smooth. So we want it nice and smooth. Now it's going to get a little bit, I made mine a little bit wider at this end, but the real narwhals, they're all just the same size. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to actually spin the whole thing. To try and get this to felt a little bit. 
Now I'm going to tack it. And then this is tricky. So I'm going to use my little cord. Not that end. You can see what I did here. You can see it's tucked in right there. I tucked it in. So if I hold it, and I go around, and I'm going to go over it. Coming back. I went over it. Going down on an angle. I found out you can adjust this afterwards. I'm making the spirals on the horn with this cord. I do this now because I want it to be buried, the other end to be buried in my felting. If you're unsure that that tip is going to hold, you could put a little dot of glue on it. Use a toothpick or something. So here we can get to this end and we can tie it. I'll do it twice. And I'm going to leave a little end because I'm going to felt it in. All right, so now we have a little horn. So you can move these around to get them after you have them on. To get them evenly spaced if you're like me and you want them perfect. Which doesn't always happen. Okay, so now we have this smoosh face. Now I'm just going to use the regular color that he's going to be. I'm going to start with a little piece and I'm going to put it in that spot that got squished. Remember where your mouth is. I'm stacking it so that it's flat when I add it. Our goal here is not a lot of extra fiber, just to color our project. But you see, I made that cord disappear. You can hear me hitting the wire. And when you're working with wire, you learn to automatically stop when you hit it, like it pulls the needle back when you hit it. So, hey, get your nose back out there. This is a little bit wider because I go around the base of the horn with a little piece. Just like that. And then I'm going to just bury that in the, the side of the head I didn't fill in. Can remember where the mouth is. Let me get some more here. So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to coat the entire body in the color of this purple and get it all nice and smooth because then after I'm done with that I'm gonna add eyes and a tail and some fins
If you're using a merino to coat your narwhal, it will take you a lot longer to get the holes not to show in your project. So the smaller your needle, the less you'll see the holes. This is a Coriadale that I dyed, um, so the holes aren't super visible. Okay, so before I go hog wild and get his back all coated, let me show you what I'm gonna do for his belly. So I did it on this one. See how this is a lighter shade? This is Ash Corydale and this is a lighter shade. So what I did, I showed you, I told you I was gonna do this. I am gonna take, this is like a Merino blend, an Angelina, and I'm gonna make a stack. This is white. I'm gonna take my dog brush and start down here at the bottom and just Comb it onto your brush, let it go on. All right, so we have a layer of that. And then take some of your purple or whatever color you're using, layer it on. Some more white. So you can use, if you have hand cards, it's so much easier to do, to use two hand cards. And I do, but I thought I would demonstrate what most people probably have in their arsenal. So then you can just peel this off and you have this little sandwich. So now we're gonna take the sandwich and comb it onto here. If you have a blending board, you could do it on the blending board. The whole idea here is to mix the colors. And that will give us a lighter purple for his belly. And then do it again, flip it over. I like to flip it over. You can see it's getting way lighter already. have to do this you could use a whole nother color it's just fun to teach teach you how to blend your own colors you can blend any colors this way to get a lighter color so you see we're getting this way lighter purple than what I'm putting on so let's put that on his belly just gonna lay it on there. Plus it has some sparkles in it. You know me and my glitter, I like glitter. Probably gonna have to do two stacks to get enough if you're using the dog brush. So once you get the whole belly covered, you're gonna go back to covering the back and you'll just let that blend down into the belly color. So you have a natural transition. This is gonna come out a little variegated because I rushed my blending. I probably should have done it a couple more times, but that's okay. I'm gonna to have to do one more pile. But you can see it's definitely way lighter than what I'm putting on the back. So up here on his head, we need this little lump. 
So this needs to be skinnier right here. They're the weirdest looking fish. bottom jaw. I don't like the belly color to be on the bottom jaw. I like the jaw to be the same color as the head. And you know, I don't think narwhals come in purple, but since they're the unicorn of the sea, I figured this one deserved to be purple. a little bit more color up under here. You can see your core wool, you're not done. Takes about a half an ounce to cover the whole narwhal and make his fins. decide where your eyeball's going to go. They have pretty big eyes. So I trace out where the eye's going to go. And then I go on the, you can go this way. So you know where it's gonna be on the other side. I just happen to have another needle here. Or you can look at it from the front. Cause you kinda want them to be in the same spot. see from the front that our eyes are at the same level. The weirdest looking creatures. All right, we have a mouth. I'm not all the way felted over here.
Okay, so now that I know where my eyes are going to be, I'm not going to do them yet. I am going to sit here, and it's probably going to take me a good half an hour to get us all his colors on. So I'm going to sit here and poke to my heart's content and get him all purple. Okay, so I've been felting this purple on for a while, making him nice and smooth. And then I wanted to show you. So I like to, where the belly, because your, your, your narwhal should be getting pretty firm by now. He's, he's not super s soft, but he's not super squishy either. So I like to kind of make a line with my needles, a soft line just right here so it kind of delineates where the belly is up to the mouth just right up to his chin and then you can do it on this side so I haven't done it at all over here yet so I'm gonna start right there I'm just gonna come along kind of make sure it's the same on both sides And basically it's just a series of stabbing just a little deeper to make that sculpt. Your piece will not sculpt if he's too soft. So once, once you get to the right firmness, you can felt in lines. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. So next, we're going to do this tail. We're going to put his tail on. This is pretty easy. You're just gonna take some of your body color. You're gonna make some stacks. So I have a little stack. I know I know you guys like this. So it's like two inches wide. Just want to make sure that that's not just doesn't turn into a knot. So I have two inches, and I'm gonna lay them under my tail this way I'm gonna fold it over the wire stab along the wire now you can get a little artsy here so I'm attaching this to the wire and to the tail and then I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to freehand the shape of a tail. Uh, can you see that? And then I'm going to just fold it in. I don't worry too much about the end of the wire over there. Just fold it in. I like it to be skinnier at the end. Obviously, you need to flip it over. Mine was becoming attached. And so it became a little bit misshapen when I took it. So took it off. So I'm going to felt it back into shape. Again, if you're using Merino, this will take you forever to felt. poke it like 10 times more than I'm having to poke this Corydale. Maybe a hundred times more. Flip it again. You can see it's starting to turn into a solid piece. know you're done felting when there's not lots of fibers on the, the one side. Basically making a little piece of fabric here. Plus 
you can feel it in your needle. See how it's not sticking to the pad as much? This is where your scissors might come in on these little fins and tails. If you want to trim off the fibers on the edges when we're done. Okay, now I'll make another side. And then we'll put his real fins on. I'm gonna make another stack. So again, I got a stack, about two inches. Fold it over. Follow my wire. Attach it up there now. You don't want to felt it to that other fin. Kind of move him out of the way. Just poked myself. Draw your little tail with your needle and flip all this in. So we're gonna keep flipping that until it turns into a nice little piece of fabric. You can make this tail however big you want. Think goldfish shape when you're putting it in here. I suggest you Google pictures of narwhals because they're pretty interesting looking. They do have spots. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm going to squirrel for a second. He has a bald spot <laughs> right on the top of his head. We're going to have to cover that. So and another interesting trick when you are covering something light colored like this, if you walk outside in the sunshine, you can see every spot you missed. So sometimes it's kind of good to go outside and look at your projects in the sunlight. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. You can see it's not sticking to my felting pad as much because we're almost there. I'll probably firm him up just a little bit more here in a minute. So if you do this and you have all these little hairs sticking out, you can take your scissors. Just trim around the edge. That will make it nice and smooth. You're going to want to go back and felt it some more. You know, once you do that, you can see his... And, you can bend this tail around because you have that wire in there. Make sure that you attached that tail fiber to the main body or it will slide right off that wire. So see how we trimmed it, and now we're felting it again. It's becoming nice and smooth. All right, so now we're going to put on these little fins. If you want to get super fancy, you could... Cut another piece of wire like you did for the nose about 
five and a half inches and use your skewer, slide it through and make your fins the same way we just did. But I don't wire mine, um, not those ones. So I'm just gonna show you how I put them on. How we're gonna make two identical fins. Just make your two inch stacks. That is my stomach growling and I hope you can't hear it. All right, got some stacks. And I'm going to, for someone to draw my fin, it's kind of like, which shape is that? A cone. Remember, you're gonna fold it in. Just fold it in. Fold the tip down. So the size on this fin is about one and a half by two. second one. I like to do them side by side because then, you know, they're pretty similar. Fold it in along my drawing line. Fold in the tip. And now, just like the tail, I'm going to felt these, I'm gonna flip them back and forth. Leave this fringe because we're going to attach with the fringe. So leave that fringe on that end. If you have a, a multi-needle tool that has like the five to seven needles in it, this is a good place to use it. It's just faster. I have them, I always forget to use them. See, I'm starting to bunch up this end where the fringe is with my needles. Once you get them both felted, they go onto your narwhal. This, mine, this one's a little fatter than that one. It's about two inches back. So right where the curve is, you're gonna face it towards his mouth, right above the belly area, about a half an inch. I'm using that fin and I'm going to bring this in just a hair just to fold it in just a little bit it's kind of like putting a rabbit ear on only it's a fin okay you got that fringe there and you're gonna fold the fin back stab from the top And then I'm going to go back here and use this fringe underneath. little bunch of fringe helps it stand out from the body once we get it felted in a little bit so now we have his, his fin put on I'll put the other fin on in a minute after I finish what we're gonna do now is take a tiny bit of white 
Remember, you drew those little eyeballs. You know, I probably should have told you how big those were. They are a half an inch. I'm going to fill in this eye with white. Gather up all your stray. I don't want to use a bunch, just use a little bit to get it all in there. Felt the edges. So now I use a tiny bit of black. Remember, you can always add, you can't take away, you're gonna make a little round ball. I make a little wad, because I will felt it into a ball. They have fairly big eyeballs. Put it right in the middle. You notice I'm not felting a lot in the middle of the ball. I'm just felting on the edges to make it into a ball. So then he needs an eyelid. You know, I don't know if narwhals have eyelids, but mine do. So I have this little piece. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it again. I'm going to felt gently along here without stabbing myself. So I have this little folded piece with fringe. I'm just gonna put it on. Now, how you put this on determines if your narwhal looks happy or mad or sad. See, right now he looks sleepy. So I want the center to come up. So I'm gonna push it up with my finger. And I'll just felt all this fringe into his head. Then take a couple black fibers. You're gonna start right here in the corner. Give them a little outline. Then go back along the eyelid. I like to take them up. I looked at a video of a narwhal and that's what it looked like he had eyeliner on, so mine are gonna have eyeliner. And then in your mouth, you can make them smile. Let's tip it up just a little bit. Remember, when you're putting in these details, less fibers is better. I'm smoothing out his face a little bit. So see, I worked one side of his head. Now I'm going to go and work the other side of his body. So now we're going to put this fin on. I got to felt it a little bit more. You can stare at this eyeball for a second.
If you're not comfortable trimming once it's on your project, you can always trim them before you put them on. So I want to make sure that this is in the same position as that. You can take it up towards his mouth. Push that little fringe in there, help it stand up, and then we're going to shape it a little. You know, you can always add some wrinkles because he's bent right there. All right, let's do his other eye. And he'll be close to done. Add a little teeny bit of white. I like the felt around because it makes his eye indent a little bit more. Let's see, do the eyeball. Make a little eyelid. I'm getting those stray fibers out of there. Okay, now we're going to do his little eyeliner. And then I'll just felt around and make sure he's all good. Oh, I did this one a little backwards from the other one. So let's cut this. And then we'll start over here. There's our happy little narwhal. I just have a little bit of felting to do on him. Okay, so I've been working on him a bit, getting him all smooth, taking all the little pieces of my farm out of him. I uh, want to give a shout out to Felt by Philippa for mentioning our new YouTube channel. That's pretty awesome. We really appreciate it. And um, this guy's pretty much done. He's pretty much done. He's got a little bit wider head than his friend over here. Uh, but you can just squeeze the wire down. You can see it goes down. I, I really like the purple. I like the purple. 
Axel and Narwhal guys are kind of fun. All right, action. Thanks for joining me today for my little Narwhal video. I hope you learned how to do this. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments and we'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if you like the video, click like and subscribe because it really helps us out. And if you need supplies, head over to liongate.org and the farm store and you should find all the wool you need.